As President Trump continues his efforts to fund a wall, border wall, some sections of the southern border are already seeing improvements from previous government funding. Angela Cocherga of the Albuquerque Journal reports from El Paso, Texas, where upgrades are nearly complete. Just a few blocks south of downtown El Paso, construction crews are busy replacing 20 miles of old chain link and wire mesh fencing with a new bollard style barrier. This wall is gonna be at least 18 feet high above the grade. It's concrete inside of steel with rebar running up the middle. There's a five foot anti-climb plate at the top. It's buried six feet into the ground with another two feet of concrete underneath that. El Paso Sector Border Patrol Chief Aaron Hull says a physical barrier is critical in this urban area to prevent people from illegally crossing the border and escaping into busy city streets. It's a very solid structure, but it enables us to see through it so we can see what's going on on the south side and be prepared to react. The money to upgrade the structure between El Paso, Texas and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico was approved by Congress in the 2017 Homeland Security budget before the current fight over funding President Trump's wall. There is no invasion here. I mean, this is our home. And Historian David Romo, who grew up in El Paso, says the border has become a victim of politics. Listen to the voices of people from here of the border residents themselves. And I think they're going to tell you an entirely different story and um, perspective than what you're hearing from people in Washington, D.C. The first call for a wall between El Paso and Ciudad Juarez was more than 100 years ago to keep Chinese immigrants from coming across the border. And it was the same kind of narratives that they were here to steal our jobs, that they were bringing in drugs, opium. There has been some sort of fencing in this area for decades. During the George W. Bush administration, Congress approved stronger barriers here and along other stretches of borderland that were busy illegal crossing points. Look, there's a gap right here. In the historic Chihuahuita neighborhood of El Paso, near the Rio Grande, the tall border barrier is a backyard fence for some homes. 60-year-old Manuela Rodriguez has lived here her entire life, and she says the fence has made a difference. When we didn't have the, the fence, it was free for all, coming in and out, coming in and out, and not only people. And, you know, they would bring in smuggling kids, they would bring in drugs and everything. Today, there are far fewer illegal crossings in this area of downtown El Paso. Occasionally, people climb over the fence, leaving behind evidence, coats or jackets on top, used to protect their hands. As you can see the jackets up there. But overall, illegal immigration from Mexico has plummeted to a historic low. There's already a wall, so I don't see the issue. I guess a lot of people from other parts of the U.S., they don't know how we live here. There, there's already a lot of security. On a sunny afternoon in El Paso, just a few blocks from an international bridge, the Hernandez sisters and a friend walk their dogs. They're concerned about the president's portrayal of the border as a dangerous place. This is a really safe city, and it just makes you feel unsafe somehow. Like, all that wire they put there, it just looks horrible. It's like, it's threatening um, in an issue that's not really threatening us here. U.S. Customs and Border Protection in the El Paso area recently added new razor wire at international border crossings to keep crowds of migrants seeking asylum from overrunning legal ports of entry. Humberto Porras questions the president's need to declare an emergency on the border to build a wall. He said uh, the president of uh, using it for that. Uh, Democrats can also use it to push uh, gun control policy. So I think he, he set the bar pretty, pretty low. This is the point where new construction to extend the existing border wall comes to an end. Here you can see the Normandy style vehicle barriers. This is also the dividing line between those who are in favor of a big barrier and those who believe there are other ways to secure the border. No wall is going to stop everyone from crossing the border legally. 
No form of, of barrier is ever going to do that. It's not intended to do that. It's intended to discourage them, to make it more difficult. Border Patrol Chief Hull admits the wall is one component of a border security strategy. The wall is a key part of our border security posture, but it's only part of it. Our greatest resource are our agents. They always have been, always will be. This show of force at the border barrier just west of El Paso recently was part of a series of exercises designed to demonstrate Border Patrol agents' readiness. The goal, discourage illegal border crossings as a growing number of migrants from other countries wait in Mexico. Most are families and unaccompanied minors from Central America. Many turn themselves in to Border Patrol agents and ask for asylum, a legal process. Between October and January, agents took more than 25,000 Central American parents with children into custody. In the El Paso sector alone, which includes all of New Mexico, El Paso and David Romo is critical of the ramped up border security response. I feel very, very safe. I mean, I, I, I feel more under threat from kind of the extreme militarization. Now, as President Trump and Congress clash over the national emergency declaration and a legal challenge looms, Many of those living on the border worry they're caught in the middle of a lingering wall or nothing fight. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Angela Cocherga in El Paso, Texas.